Good day, Aero Modelers. Today I would like to talk to you about flying wings and vertical tails and where to place them and where not to place them and where uh, I am going with a hopefully truly vertical tailless flying wing. What you see before you is a standard 1.2 meter Optera from eFlight. Stock and configuration looks very similar to this with the exception that it has two very small vertical tails right here um, that um, I had found out some years ago when I first got this model that they contribute to a unrecoverable stall situation. When you remove the vertical tails, the airplane will still stall and spin, but if you have enough altitude, you can recover from them. But that's enough about the problems with the airplane. What I'm more interested in showing you today is what I've done to another Optera to um, add wingtip drag rudders uh, very similar to what you see on the B-2 aircraft, probably on the B-21 and on the UAV, the X-47B, all by uh, north of Grumman. So the basic Optera looks like this. Many of you have seen it before, the 1.2 version. The airplane has a bad tendency when you fly at FPV in gusty conditions to your waggle. That's because of the tip sails out on the vertical tips, out on the wing tips. They produce a yawing moment and a undamped yawing moment that is a result from, like I said, gusty conditions. So any horizon flying wing with wing tip vertical tails will do that. If the wing sweep is more generous, more like 30 degrees, this Optera is closer to 20, then you get some natural yaw stability from the fact that when the airplane is yaw, the, this leading edge becomes more, uh, has a higher drag than the opposite leading, uh, leading edge, which is now receding, regardless of whether there's vertical tails on it or not. But that doesn't happen on flying wings with mild sweeps, especially plank flying wings, the ones that are constant cord, straight leading edge. You're never going to see those uh, fly without vertical tails of some sort. You do see some on the more generously sweeped flying wings. You'll see where guys have removed the upward vertical tail and just carved the wing to a curvature and left the leading edge blunt. That's nice because what happens is, is now as that wing starts to yaw, that blunt edge that's out on the wing tip drags the wing back. So they can get away without having uh, vertical tails or very, very small vertical tails on the tips of their wings. And then you don't get that yaw waggle when it's gusty. It's very disconcerting when you're flying FPV, not so much line of sight, that when the airplane is flying, it's sitting there doing this on gusty days, and it's doing a little bit of this. It's actually very nauseating to fly a uh, flying wing on a gusty day that isn't well damped in both pitch and yaw. So to that end, I modified my first uh, Optera quite a few times. This is its most recent configuration. You can see some putty on the wings from where I tried uh, alternate vertical tail positions, alternate sizes, and then what led up to this is my desire to have wingtip drag rudders. These yellow objects out here on the ends are wingtip drag rudders. They deploy as speed brakes, and they can also move differentially left and right for your control. The idea being that this one speed brake popped up on one wing will drag that wing back, producing yaw control. Very interesting to note that with this airplane, the mild dihedral you see in the airplane, or actually almost no dihedral at all, if not maybe negative dihedral, the airplane still rolls with yaw command. Just like the old uh, training airplanes we used to fly when we were kids, they only had rudder elevator, they had a generous amount of dihedral, when you use the rudder, the wing would yaw, and one wing would have a little more lift than the other, and it would turn very much like an aileron airplane, but only with rudder. So it's interesting to note that when I flew this airplane for the first time with the drag rudders, that um, that did happen. I did get some roll from the yaw, and that was expected, and it's not a bad thing, uh, because you can always take it out with uh, L conventional aileron control on the elevons, if you don't want the airplane to roll while you're yawing, if you want to just side slip a little bit. So what I did here is I 3D printed um, a gear set 
that would dry as I, as I pulled on only the upper speed brake, the lower speed brake goes down. So there's a little tiny gear in there that allows me to just use the single servo and drive both the upper and lower clamshell speed brakes. So some 3D printed parts, some plywood, some fiberglass, and some uh, balsam wood just to make some filler. And I got myself a nice little wingtip speed brake. So what I did is I had to take area away from the yellow bond. The yellow bond used to go from here to here. And with the speed brake uh, taking that away, I added inboard area a little bit more than I had on the outboard because as you move inboard, you get less aileron effectiveness, you get less elevator effectiveness because you get closer to the CG. But you will see that it worked fine. I added some area to the inboard side that I took away for using the speed brake. So let's go through the control motions and see how this actually works at transmitter. Okay, I don't know if you can see both the transmitter. Maybe if I do it like this. Okay, so as I move the rudder to the left, you'll see the left wing tip expand out. The speed brake expand out to about 40 degrees included angle. And as I move the right, it moves out. Notice that the other one does not move. Only the one that's commanded in the direction that I need to go moves. And then on the AB switch, I'm sorry, the SB switch on my Tyrannus, in the middle position, I get a little bit of speed brake deployed on both sides and differential from there. And then fold down, gives me about 40 degrees included angle, and then I still have differential from there producing the yaw control that I want on the vehicle. So you may ask yourself, hey Tom, why are there vertical tails on this airplane? Well, as I mentioned before, the leading edge sweep is not very generous on this airplane. And I was afraid that if I tried to fly this airplane the first time with just the drag rudders, that I may have an unrecoverable situation and end up spending a lot more time in my shop than I really wanted to. So what I did is I added some simple foam vertical tails to the top and the bottom, a uh, dorsal and a ventral, and um, they will provide some yaw stability in the beginning that will allow me to get the airplane up and away and fly it around and do the assessment I need to do on the speed brake wingtip uh, rudders, and then I will slowly start cutting these things down until hopefully I get to no vertical tail at all. If that never happens, then it's probably due to the fact that the speed brakes need to be a little bit larger. I may need to go to some gyro to help me with that because the period of the oscillation may get to the point where I can't keep up with it. So this is not the end item to my wingtip drag rudders. This is just a study to understand how they, well they work and uh, where and when I can use them and on this particular airplane, I may always need some sort of small vertical tail to uh, provide some, some margin of stability so that I can then just use the drag rudders um, for your control. Let's go to the video of the first flight that I made a few days ago. <laughs> 